Okay, now that it's hot out, I don't prefer this 416, which is... Okay. All right, guys, we're back. Up is hot. It is getting hot out here, so we're gonna, we're gonna mow through this. This is episode four, video four, of our four-part series with the Radian, the Sons of Liberty, and the Lantac. Um, we learned a lot shooting them. Um, we gained some feel for the guns. Now we're going to shoot them side by side. I'm gonna try and shoot it a little slower. I wanna feel the trigger pull and the reset and everything like that on each one of them. Um, one thing that we forgot to touch on that we did say that we wanted to touch on. The interesting part about all of these guns, and if Lantac, Radian, or Sons of Liberty are listening, we love you all. But one thing that was very interesting for us is, if you wanna, I hope you never have a gas issue with any of these guns because you're going to have to chop off the muzzle device to get that one looks pretty thin but i think it's still too big yeah. um, you're gonna have to chop off the muzzle device to get your gas block off if you have a gas tube issue or a gas block issue or anything like that because none of these guns run an sl muzzle device so strike industries has the miller comp um, vg6 mm -hmm. has the epsilon sl and the gamma sl those are muzzle devices with a 0.749 outside diameter so your gas blocks on most standard rifles is going to be 0 0.750 if you run a muzzle device that's bigger than 0 0.750 you have to cut it off to get your gas block off. Um, if you run a slim one, you can just slide it off right yeah. over it because the outside diameter of your muzzle device, I keep going like this, it's weird, it is. Um, is smaller than the inside diameter of your gas block. So that is the only thing that's a little bit of a bummer to me is if there is an issue, not that you're planning on something going wrong, mm -hmm. but um, it's a motherfucker if something does go wrong. Yeah. Do you have thoughts? Uh, no, it, it's it's... Honestly, it's described perfectly. The uh, only one I wouldn't have an issue with, but I don't think I'll ever have a gas issue with, is going to be this front sight post True. because it's pinned to the barrel, right? Right. right. If they, if I believe that clamp-on gas uh, gas blocks were as, were as reliable as like uh, screwed-in ones, then you can do that. I would definitely do a clamp-on. Okay. Um, I'm sure some companies make them where they're fucking super reliable. I, 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 that's what I'm checking for. None of these are clamp-on. Um, yeah, and the only one that's that's anti-walk-ish is going to be this one. Yeah. Um, the Lantac has a weird shoulder on it, but... It's interesting. Yeah, it is, but it's not actually wedged in there yeah, to where so it's not gonna walk. This is, it's less of an anti-walk and more of a, uh, it's a, it's keeping it true, basically. So you're keeping your gas block straight right. rather than keeping it from walking forward. It's keeping it from moving from side to side. You will be able to take your handguard off and work on your gas block, but if you ever need to take it off, you're not gonna be able to. Well, you will. Yeah, you ain't taking off your barrel nut either. So if you, you wanna take off your barrel nut, if you want to take off your barrel and your barrel nut, That's I don't true. know why you would, but if you if you ever have are so inclined to do so, that gas block sits on top of that barrel nut, which means that when the barrel nut comes off, the barrel's one unit is gas block, barrel, and barrel nut. You're not getting anything else off unless right. you break the weld on this, which it, has a higher probability of, of stripping the threads and fucking the threads than I feel comfortable doing on like a $700 barrel, personally. Yeah. Because the radium barrels are super expensive. Any barrel, like I, yeah. I just don't want to go for that. Your, your gun is down time and things like that. So we're not going to harp on that. That was just something that I thought might have been cool. Now, you're we, not going to be able to get quick disconnect for cans, mm -hmm. right? We are, yeah, we are very pro 13.7, 14 5. 100%. But there are cons to it as well. Right. Uh, that, this is just one of the one of the ones that there are. We wanted to point that out on these. Maybe they'll switch it up and use a, a thinner one on these next ones, or maybe they just they want it to be can ready or maybe yeah, ready. Maybe they use a, a clamp on uh, gas block, which makes it God, that's, your problem. That's scary as fuck, though. I know. Not big on them. Okay, so we you wanted to go most expensive, cheapest middle. Yep. Radian. Yep. It's pretty awesome. Yep. It's pretty awesome. Um, I think I think it's heavier than I like it to be, than, than I think a, a rifle should be. Kept me on target nicely though. Uh -huh. It is heavier. It has every bell and whistle that you would want on a rifle. Mm -hmm. Other than maybe a peck. The ambi control, yeah, no. The ambi controls are nice to use. They're not in weird spots <clears throat> or ungodly difficult to use. They're um, not necessary, but no. they are convenient. Mm -hmm. we, we lubed all these off camera, so these are all freshly lubed, so they all will run just fine. Um, we yep. shot them prior uh, dry because we want to know how they shoot from the factory. Right. I mean, from pins to charging handle to buffer tube everything to is everything, it's radiant yep. and it's all nice. Mm -hmm. So for 3,100 roses, 
you're getting a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's see if it's worth it. Okay, let's go our, Let's go over all of them real quick, just for a recap, and then we'll shoot them all side by side. That way we cool. don't have to go back over them. Sons of Liberty. Super simple. It has your front sight post, which is pinned into the barrel, which is super nice. It has their Sons of Liberty Gunworks Knox. Um, I think it's a flash rider, if I remember correctly. It is. It's a comfortable gun. It's not ambidextrous at all, minus your charging handle. But most of these parts, if not all these parts, are made by them. So everything's in-house, which means everything's also warrantied. Kind of the same thing as these other two rifles. All these rifles have lifetime warranties. If anything breaks, you just send it right back to them because they're not going to go, well, we don't make that product. We don't make that part, so you got to go back to this company. They don't give you the runaround like a lot of companies do. It's the most mil-spec-ish. Yep. Which is fine. Uh, I don't adjacent. have a problem. Yeah, mil spec adjacent because you can upgrade some parts if you wanted to smooth out the trigger. You can get a velocity trigger, a yeah, Gunsley trigger, or something sure. like that, or a Radian trigger yeah. if you want. So that thing is super nice. That one's going to run you just under fifteen hundred roses there. Um, so the it is half, less than half the price of this Radian. Uh, Lantac. Yep. Um, I really like it. Yep. I really like it. It's a lubricated. It is dumb smooth. Same thing with the radium, but lubricated is dumb smooth. That's one thing we did notice when we were charging these off camera. We did we did feel a difference in how racking around in the chamber actually feels between all three. Right. Like this feels real smooth. Feels real smooth. We can notice it. It doesn't feel bad, but we notice some like a. It's like a mil spec. It's a mil spec sound. You, right. you know you know the exact sound we're talking about. Right. It's just the chunk when it goes right in the battery. You're like ah, okay, okay, I like it, but it's still. You know, it's nice to have like a smooth sounding rifle. It just kind of operates fluidly. Yep. Um, Lantac Dragon, so we get a lot of good uh, compensation of the actual recoil, which whatever recoil there is. Yep. Everything on here is also made by Lantac. Other um, than the charging handle other and than the charging fire handle, yep. Uh, those are both radium, which is kind of nice. Um, I was looking at the BCG. It is that rounded cam pin, which is kind of cool. Yep. Um, a, very, a really, really nice coated uh, BCG, which is nice. Other than that, just uh, Magpul furniture, and we're gonna kind of see how we both like the butt pad a lot. We're gonna I do. It's comfy. Yeah, we're gonna see how all these kind of as shoot you get together. older, convenience, man, right. and and uh, can you believe he's pushing softens. seventy? Whoa, it's nuts! Fuck you, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not the oldest person at the company anymore. Okay. Uh huh. But I'm close. Yeah. Um, so let's just shoot them. Let's see how we like them, and let's see if we can notice the difference. Cool. Uh, do we have rounds? Extra rounds? Do we have extra rounds, Raul? That's it? Yeah, so don't shoot all the ammo. Is there 10 in each? 10-ish. All right. Just don't blow your load in one go. Take your time. Charge it. <laughs> it's like you can see the you can see the beautiful minds equations going on in his head. Okay. Now that it's hot out, I don't prefer this 416, which is weird for me to say because I've been all soft grip. And now that it's hot out, I don't like it. I actually like those B5s. Those P23s are really nice yep. grips. Yep. Okay, so a change them there. Now, they also make like bottom caps to where you can still keep the functionality of having like a little storage compartment at the bottom of them. Okay. Which is cool. You want to think on it? Yeah. All right. Okay. I went Sons of Liberty next. So we're shooting in the same order.
Okay. For me, mm -hmm. trigger pull, reset, shot accuracy as far as felt recoil, muzzle rise, things like that. If I want to spend, if I can spend $3,100 on a rifle, I will get the best rifle out of these three for $3,100. I think it was by far the best shooting rifle it was the smoothest, it was the best gas dissipation. The trigger is the best for me. If I go down to the land tack, I feel like literally I can feel the price difference. It's a little bit twangier. The trigger has a little bit of a crunchier reset than the, than the Timney does or the Radian, same thing, right? Um, it felt a little bit cheaper than that, which is fine because they're playing in that space. Just like we make the RS-15 at 700 bucks, I'm not trying to play in the $1,500 space. It's probably not gonna feel as good as that, but it could if you upgrade it, right? Now, going on to the Sons of Liberty, I loved it. It felt like a mil spec. I like how compact it is. Um, I like the grip, um, right? I didn't like this 416, which is an epiphany to me. Um, but it did feel less. I don't have ambidextrous. I don't have the same um, um, recoil mitigation. Um, there is a few things that are different. Um, I actually will prefer them in the order of the price point. And I did not expect to say that because everybody that knows me or bought a gun for me in the last seven years I've worked at Rifle Supply, I do not go to the most expensive one first. I go to the one that I feel is best first. It has nothing to do with price. In this instance, I'm very surprised. I prefer the most expensive one. It shot hands down the cleanest to me. Um, best trigger pull, best reset, right on target. And I was shooting the small circle the entire time. I didn't move around um, with all the guns. Yeah, that's where I'm That's where I'm at and I'm super surprised. My heart's kind of hurt because I'm very frugal, um, but it is what it is. What about you? I'm gonna go with Lantec. Yeah, I had a feeling you were gonna go that way. I, no, I, I, I'm, I'm stuck with it you because- mean for the price point and the performance, it's a good happy medium? Is that where you're at? I, I would take the Land Tech, the Sons of Liberty, then I'd take the Radiant. Why? I'm not a fan of the Radiant, I don't like how it shoots. You mean it hits stuff? Well, I hit shit, the rifle just does what I tell it to do. Okay, well, we're gonna disagree. Yeah. Sons of Liberty, it shot like every other mil-spec rifle I've ever shot, it did. and I know exactly how they operate. That's fair. Okay, okay, I'll you know, give you like, that. The consistency of, of what mm -hmm. it's gonna sound like, what it's gonna feel like, what it's gonna be like on your shoulder. This just feels like a rifle that I would like to shoot off the wall. It feels like an upgraded, cheaper rifle. I disagree. It feels like an, for me, it feels like an upgraded, cheaper rifle. This feels like it's got all the best shit on it, to me. And no, everybody that knows me knows I'm, there's no way I'm spending $3,000 on a rifle. It's not fucking happening. Yeah, I would, t I would take the Lantec all day. I think the Lantec trigger is better. I like how it's set up. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, have, I have bigger paws and I usually prefer a, a larger uh, handguard. I actually like the smaller, more compact handguard. I've never heard you say that. I know, it's weird. Well, we both said shit that we're not used to saying. Yeah, I don't know. I don't um, know. Interesting. Well, there you have it, folks. That is our review of the Lantac, the Radian, and the Sons of Liberty. 13.7 Sons of Liberty, 14.5 Radian, 14.5 Lantac. Uh, they're all awesome guns. And I just, in my opinion, I think price point is going to dictate where you want to go with this. Yeah. Um, I do think there are certain things you could do to the Sons of Liberty. I think you could spend 500 bucks um, or less and maybe 300 bucks and get that thing shooting pretty damn smooth. I don't think the trigger is ever going to be as nice as this one or this one. Um, I don't know. It's a tough conversation. We could talk about it for an hour. Yeah. But they don't want to listen. To fuck mean, it. They yeah. don't want to listen to us for I an mean, hour. I mean, it's interesting because I have an Anderson lower parts kit, my first rifle I ever built, and I've probably got close to, I don't know, 70,000 rounds of that rifle, and it shoots just as good as a Radiant Trigger. 
I mean, I usually run mil spec, but I run the there's, yeah, there's I run yellow in. springs. It's just one in. I know, just like time. Yeah, time and rounds behind. Any that. of them are gonna do the job. It's just how cool you want to look and what name brand you want to have on it, yeah. and if you want it to shoot nicer right out of the box. Yeah. I think money will get you there a little bit, yeah. uh, but also it's not gonna fix your shooting. If you so, buy a Raiden, I'll judge you, but I won't hate you for it. No, because it's a really nice rifle. But just so think, just remember this, all the novice to intermediate shooters, it's not gonna fix your shooting. No. Right? You still shoot like shit with a radiant. <laughs> and, that, and that's the thing, right? So I shoot a lot of competitive pool, right? Everybody feels better and shoots better when they have a new cue or a more expensive cue, but it's not gonna fix your stroke. It yeah. does for a little bit, and then you go back to the way you're doing it. So work on your shooting. Um, and then this will just make it even better and more enjoyable, not the other way around. Yeah. Buy a cheap rifle, buy a shitload of ammo. And go and shoot. And shoot the shit out of it. Yep. So hopefully you guys enjoyed that. We had a blast. We got to shoot a lot, which is cool. Yeah. Um, some really nice guns. And uh, we'll see you, uh, see you on the next one. Yeah, next week. Have a good one. I liked it.